The RX 6600 Non XT at 200 bucks is the best value card to get right now. Let's see how this card performs in our competitive games in 2023. That's Warzone 2, Apex Legends, Fortnite, Cameron, and PUBG. And of course, we're going to be tuning these on all competitive settings. And we're going to put this card in our Ryzen 5800 X3D rig. We are using the latest drivers at the time recording, XMP and the SAM has been enabled in the BIOS. And of course, we are using an external capture card so there's no performance loss during this recording. Okay, let's go. Okay, boys, let's start off with Warzone Synthetic Benchmark. So we're going to test 1080p FSR, 1080p native, and then 1440p with FSR 2.1. So yeah, let's try this out. All settings are competitive. So we've got competitive settings in here, and then we'll just test this out. So first thing you'll notice that everything has GPU utilization maxed out. All, like maxed out on all three modes. 1080p with FSR obviously has the best FPS in here, and that's um, 1080p native is the middle ground, and then 1440p FSR is sort of like the lowest FPS. But in the frame plans are pretty consistent in here. I mean, uh, I really like this one. Look at that VRAM is all the way up there, seven gigabytes, and then. Um, in 1080p FSR, obviously there is lesser GPU demand, and this is why our CPU is able to push all the way up for more FPS. So, as we know, Warzone Solar -like has like visibility as a important component. So we'll try competitive 1440p with FSR 2.1 actual gameplay here, and we can see right there in the end, our FPS is around like 100 in here, but because GPU is maxed out, obviously. 1% and 0.1% lows. Like, I know we all say that 0.1% lows, you try to ignore that on um, real world gameplay. But in here alone, it's pretty tight. So it's actually pretty good. It's pretty smooth. Obviously, it doesn't have as high FPS, but with, uh, with the visibility that you gain, right, this is quite good. You know, look at that. Right. Yeah, I really like the gameplay here. I'll probably just play with this one in here. Like I get like the resolution advantage, and it's not uh, FPS is not that low. Even with smoke, it's pretty wet. Right, but okay, let's drop down to competitive 1080p with FSR 2.1. And as you notice, the FPS just goes all the way up there, probably about like 50 FPS more, like 50 percent more FPS. Right, frame times are pretty good. A little bit. Um, Jittering there, but that's totally negligible. Likewise, if uh, GPU utilization is maxed out, but even in like this one, wide areas, and I know there is a little bit of jittering there, but that's pretty fine. Always like frame times are still pretty good, like the one percent low, so one one oh one. That's that's quite good. But obviously, our VRAM here is at seven point four because we've got like eighty five percent. Then we've set our maximum allocation eighty five percent. And the good lag, it's actually even better because it's a small, small area, so you get like more FPS, and it's just pretty smooth in here. I'm happy with this one. I'll probably stick with um, you can go 1080p FSR or 1440p FSR. This one, depending on what you want to do, if you prefer visibility, then I go to 1440p. Let's go with Apex Legends in here. So Apex Legends. Now there, there is a clear difference between the two here, 1080p and 1440p. You can say right off the bat. The 44P is just terrible. Look at that 1.1% and 1% lows are really bad. Like, yeah, our GPS are maxed out, obviously, and power is at 100, 100 watts, but it's like pretty bad. And on still shots, it's not as bad. I mean, we, we still got a lot of FPS on a native 1080p compared to 1440p. In game, though, we're using competitive 1080p in here. We still got those. Um, random frame time spike as you can see here. I'm um, just trying to ignore the 0.1% lows in here, boys. Um, it's because with you know with real world gameplay, because um, server and all that stuff, network issues will play as a specific uh, effect on those numbers. So overall, this one's pretty good. We got about 200 FPS in here. Look at that, like in engagement is quite good. I don't know average SPS doesn't really mean much in real world gameplay. I've looked at our frame punch and it's still, for the most part, it's pretty consistent. As I've seen, GPU space out, VRAM's up, 4 gigabytes in here, GPU power, 
100 watts. Overall, this is quite good. Like RAM is only about 9 gigabytes usage. So it's a bad. There you go. Ooh. Yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty good. I would probably just stick with um, DDP in this one. DDP competitive. Like even on like a shot in here, like bigger landscapes, pretty good FPS still. Over 200 FPS. Obviously, we are using a 5800X3D in here, which is probably a CPU that actually has a little bit of front, but regardless, it's just still good. Let's go to Fortnite. So in here, Fortnite, we've got the best all three um, APIs, so Mix11, Mix12, and Performance Mode. And obviously, we'll start off with synthetic benchmark in here. And the first thing you probably notice is the turbo frame times and performance. Let's look at that one, boys. That's pretty bad. Like, like the jittering in this is just bad. And you can see that with all the 1%, the point one percent lows and we flex that on this course. So obviously you've got like I think the X11 is probably the beast in here. You can see that with average FPS and point one percent and one well, not point one percent, but one percent lows are um favors uh the X11. And the X12 you get like more RAM usage compared to the X11 performance mode. That I, I don't know. Obviously, with more CPU usage on the X11, you've got more CPU power, and this is why you probably get more FPS with the X11. And the X11 will be the obvious choice now. I did wonder what was causing the issues here with performance mode. Maybe it's AMD's anti lag, so I turned that one off. This one, I'm going to turn this one off and see if there's actually any difference. Like, if there's like, because that's just pretty bad frame time pacing in there. Like, look at that one. Terrible. I cannot, we've tried, tried when anti lag turned off, and there is a little bit of slight improvement, just a little bit. Okay, so but it's still bad. So, I don't know. AMD needs to fix the performance mode on this one. So, if you're using an AMD card, you might as well just submit a bug report with AMD, let them know that there's something, there's some issue with this one. And guys, if you like these type of contents, please subscribe to the channel. We are slowly growing this channel. This will be just focused on hardware testing, gameplay on competitive games that we play in here. So if you'd like that, just click that subscribe button. All right, let's go with competitive DX11, like the actual real world gameplay in here. And the GPU is, well, it's not maxed out. It's about like 80 plus percent, which is a bad 90. Percent, right? We do have those frame time spikes in there, and this is pretty normal with Fortnite um, and DX11. I don't know because in this one we haven't enabled we have enabled anti lag in here. So maybe on our next uh, next few games, I'll turn off anti lag if I'm using an AMD card because we just have to rule it out, right? Now, obviously, you know, this one's pretty good. GPU utilization is maxed out. VRAM is 3.5, RAM 10 gigabytes. Our FPS is around 300 FPS, boys. So that's pretty good right there. I, like I said, just ignore the 0.1% lows because that's, that's just on a live gameplay. It's more or less with um, server and network. And you can see in here, this one's pretty good, boys. I'm, I'm, I'm going to stay with the X11 if you're um, having an AMD card. Right. Nah, yeah, like for the most part, frame time is pretty consistent for the most part. Correct up from the frame time spikes. Oh, I'm dead. Okay, let's move on to Valorant. So with Valorant, we've got competitive settings here. We've got 1080p, 1440p competitive, and then 1440p low. And we can compare everything in here. And you can see right off the bat, I think the best one with the FP is, is actually the 1440p low settings. Okay, you can see that. All right, okay, let's go with competitive um, 1080p. See in here. It's it's good. It's good. It's good. Uh, you got those occasional like frame time spikes in here. Like less a few bit in here that I noticed while I was playing the game. And um, yeah, 600 FPS. That's hold up. There it is. Like 600 FPS. Of course, that's not bad really. Right. It's 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 still good. Pretty good. Now, if you if you're uh, an AP gamer, yeah, go with this one. But the settings that's fine. Let's try 1440p competitive. And obviously, because we're pushing a GPU much more in here, so we get like low FPS. As you, yeah, you can see that about 400. All right, but it's still good. All right, it's still good. And the VRAM is only 3.5 gigabytes. We're only using 3.5 gigabytes in here. It's still good. And 
as um, if you're new to the channel, I don't enable 1% or 0.1% loads so if I'm playing with this one because of the abilities in game, uh, especially with Oma. This one in here, the low for the p is probably what I would suggest if you're playing this one because um, I just felt when I was playing this game, it's more responsive. This, um, you can see that with a frame on charts as well. It's just straight, but pretty straight in here despite the effects in here and you've got the most FPS and you're not um, sacrificing um, visibility because on 40 b you've got that higher resolution okay let's go move on to our last game which is PUBG so in here we trial 1080p and 1440p um, this is a epic benchmark right we're just running around you can see obviously there is a big difference in terms of FPS 1080p would be higher in terms of FPS versus 1440p, about 170. 1080p, 1440p is about 120. Now, we've decided to use 1440p initially because with PUBG, we, we require visibility in this game. And you can see it's really bad in here. Like, look at the frame times in here, boys. But look at that. When I just shot that, the frame times just like spike. It's terrible. Like, it's just, it's, and this is like a constant thing. You would see this as I go through game. And this is not my first game. This is actually the third game I was playing this. And I was still getting the same issue like that. Look at the, look at those spikes, man. Look at those one. I can't even hit that guy. Right? It's terrible. So we scrap 1440p competitive. Let's try 1080p competitive. Right? And we'd see in here. So good, we still got those random frame time spikes. Our FPS is pretty good. Oh, look at that, this the random frame time spike. Oh, and here we go. And look at that. Try to observe again when I fired a shot. And then, okay, is that random guy? Oh, there you go, right? So obviously because we've got the GPU maxed out, I don't know, there's something here. I think when I thought about it, maybe it's, this is also something to do with these anti-lag. So let it's terrible. The frame times are just terrible. I mean, it looks good on the numbers, 1% and every shape piece looks good on numbers, but actual real world gameplay, you can feel the stuff there in there. Like, look at those ones. Look at those ones, please. All right, so um, in this one, I've re, re, uh, re tested this one with anti lag turn off. Maybe it's anti lag turn off. And that was actually, you know, um, there are still some frame time spikes, which is normal in game with PUBG, this is pretty normal with PUBG, but it's not as bad as with it turned on. And you can see that, I mean, the average FPS and 1% lows are more or less so like the same. I mean, this is smaller map, but the gameplay in here is much more smoother compared to the other ones that I played with and like turned on. And yeah, with that guy. And yep, it, it's pretty good, it's pretty good. Alright, so I would suggest if you are using an AMD card and you're playing PUBG, just turn off anti lag voice. I know anti lag is supposed to increase your, um, the, well, increase your, you know, uh, response time or, you know, decrease the input latency and all that stuff. But it, it's just not working pretty well in this one. It just throws you off in the game. And yeah, I just decided that this will probably be the way to go. Anyway, we'll be testing, doing more testing on um, on this card. I'm probably doing a streaming test uh, later down the track. So if you're interested in that, please subscribe to the channel. If you got any questions, please just pop it down in the comment section. And then I'll probably see you on the next video.